Good morning, everyone. Sorry about the glare of the sun this morning. It's me, your favorite martial arts student and hopefully one day teacher, Shane Everly. <clears throat> so again, we want to teach you how to do your belt. Now you got to have it lined up properly. I like the tag when I um, tie my belt on the outside of the belt. So uh, what I'll do is I'll take it and make sure it's facing the right way. You wrap it around once. And then twice. Trying not to let it touch the floor either out of respect for it. Now it's just the belt. Uh, um, but you still show respect for it. Now, don't think the disciples lied when they thought they seen Moses and Elijah. They just didn't understand what they were seeing. First off, I'm not saying that right. But if they were shimmering and white and wearing white apparel, they couldn't tell who they were really. They assumed it was Moses and Elijah. And another way to look at it is they used the word metamorph. Which means he could have morphed from two to one. And in a way, they didn't want to deal with who it was. So they just said it was Moses and Elijah. Now, uh, or they just assumed it was. Because to them, they're the most important men in their religion. But whatever, whatever. Now, only Jesus knows what really happened there. Because he was the one doing the morphing. Right, right. Not them. And sometimes they're men thinking like men and not like God. I don't know. Which is what they're not worthy of to be like God. <laughs> right, right. And sometimes that has to do with how you act, too. Be done, shut up. Don't 
believe you don't believe you. Only if he thinks you might have done something. Like and you're not acting good, you're acting guilty. a little bit. Now, of course, I'm learning it, so some of my techniques aren't quite like hers yet. But the more you watch something and the more you go over it, the better you get it yourself. And that's why I'm going to do uh, training on both videos, the Kinpo and the Shidaru, for a month. Or until uh, July 1st. Then I'm going to contact the Karate Connection and uh, see if I can test for Yellow Belt on YouTube and upload my video to them on YouTube. Uh, and pay the testing cost all the way up to Black Belt. I'll do each tape like that once a month. Now after I'm finished with the Shiro, Shiro, sorry about that, uh, I'll go on to other styles and start working in them. Aikido, I got a few tapes on that, ninjutsu, and learning different fighting techniques. The reason for this is each martial arts brings a unique way to defend yourself, and if you know also how to fight similarly to them, and they were to attack you, you can defend yourself adequately against them too, I know. If you know some of their techniques, you know what to expect in the fight. Now, true fighting is unexpected, right? Meaning, when you're on the street, you don't know what will happen in any situation. Now, the reason I got the jump on the guy who was in the car and tried to, in my mind, run me over, because um, he pulled in as almost immediately after I was walking in the sidewalk and he gave me safe clearance. Had he given me safe clearance, I wouldn't even got upset. It was also the way he pulled in which seemed to me fast, as if he was trying to hit me, I don't know. Or make me uh, think he was, right? Well, if you're in a car and I'm in the sidewalk, I don't get mad. Anyone would, anyone would. Now, if, if by the end of the conflict I was back to my right mind, that's still temporary insanity, even if you want to try to make it a case for anything else. Now, the point is, though, if you were in my shoes and someone pulled in behind you like uh, he did, you wouldn't be upset and ask him, did you see me? And he arrogantly replied, yes I did. <laughs> Meaning, he didn't want to wait and said he was in a hurry and didn't care about whether how close he was to me or not or that he was in a car which could harm me even if it didn't kill me. Now, even in the three-story fall, that's because I was in the Navy and could be awarded a disability too, which I would tell the guy if he was attacking that too. And the point is, I survived the car accident, which would, I would point out to either one. But when the other guy pulled in, that was different than a car accident. And the way he did so was not at a slow rate, but a fast rate. And I, I remember the details. Why? Because A, I wrote it down in one of my blogs, and B, I posted a video showing the bruises I had on myself after the fight. And see, I remember the whole de details of where I was at and where he was at too. Even if I was on the edge of the sidewalk or walking on the ground, which I never do, but whatever, whatever. Everyone in Garden City knows I walk in the sidewalk to stay away from traffic. So, prove something else, dumbass. And the point is, though, I almost knocked him silly with one punch. Though it was a flying hook punch, which he wouldn't expect. I don't know. He might expect me to attack with my feet. 
Well, that's why I jumped up and knocked him upside the head, hitting him square in the temple. To knock him dizzy. Not kill him, but get out of the situation to let him know not to do that to anyone, not just me again. Now, of course, some people fume when they lose to a smaller opponent because they think they're bigger and bigger is better. No, not always. Not always. I mean, if you only last a minute with a female, you got a big penis, what good is that? I mean, you know, she might feel the sensation for a minute, but then you're finished, right? Because you're only after your pleasure, not her pleasure. That's the point, too. But if I'm six inches and I can last over an hour, who's the better fuck me? If you were to fuck. <laughs> now, sometimes, yeah, even I can come quick, but that depends on the uh, female I'm with. Now, if you don't know what that is, when you have sex, if you're not into sex education yet, um, the male has his part of the body and the female her part of the body, they join as one. And when the male enjoys the sex, he'll do what's called climax. When he climaxes, a fluid comes out and goes into the female, and the fluid can get the female pregnant as well when it joins with the egg. So sometimes, if it don't join with the egg, she won't get pregnant. That's just a little FYI. Now, I mess it up a little bit because the first move is like this. And I'm doing it wrong. Um, the first move is like this. It's a block and a punch combination. Now, then it's a punch then you step over and it's a hammer fist or back fist to the solar plexus. Then you do the same to the right side. You can either you move your left leg to your right leg and do it like this. Again, do it like this. It's a block. And then step out into a hammer fist. Then you come around this way. Block this way and kick with this one, like that. Then you turn around and lug block this way. Then you do a knife hand block, a knife hand block, a knife hand block, and then a spear hand and kia. Yeah. Kia! Yeah. Then, alright, you turn around. I think, and I'm, I'm trying to remember just some, uh, knife hand or a, Alright, I got it now. Alright. And, uh, like this, and then you do a spear hand like this. Now, some people, I've seen them put the uh, left hand on the right for blocking purposes. But in this color, they put it to the um, chamber position. Alright, then you swing around this way, this way, and then go forward this way. Then go this way and this way, and then you do. I'm gonna show the video again. Okay. I. Here, here, 
And I'm, I'm confused about how she does the block exactly. DVD players. Um, I'm trying to touch it lightly and it, I didn't touch it right. Okay. Well, anyway, she's also in a cat stance, not a back stance. She's like this. And like this. Then like this, and then like this, and then she um, goes like this, kicks, and then comes up like that, I think. Okay. I'll see what she does there. Okay, so she's here, then here, then here, then here, then here, then here. But she puts her foot back because that's my balance problem right now. To here. Um. Okay, then she does another front kick to a reverse block, I mean a reverse punch. I, I can't see her hand movements of what she did in the other move. Okay, I'll see what where I mess it up a little. Alright, so we're gonna take it again from the spear hand. So you're here and oh not here. Here. 
do the spare hand. Um, some people put it under here, some people put it in the chamber. So you swing around to here, then to here, then that's wrong. See, I gotta think of it backwards to me, not forwards to her. Because when, when she's on the tape, her right is my left and my left is her right. Now you also gotta learn the footwork properly too. Because each kata is different. And they are to teach you stances and also uh, fighting technique prearranged by the sensei or the karate organization itself. Now, Shidaru is also associated with um, another uh, Okinawan uh, who took over the study of it after his father. Now, him and Demura had a falling out. Mm -hmm. And Demura didn't want to be under him, but the father. Mm -hmm. Which who's greater, the father or the son? The father. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean he disrespects you, but he is equal to you, even though you're the son of the father. Mm -hmm. You're both, one, his biological son, and the other, his adopted son. Mm -hmm. In a way, too. Now, y'all both look bad if y'all making it an issue about who's who. But it seems to me Demura is being a little bit more humble about it than uh, the son. But if you can bury the hatchet like in the Karate Kid, that's part of the example there. Right? And I'm sure when they did the story, they took some of it from Demura's actual problem with the son of his instructor who will acknowledge his rank. And, and that's sort of a problem for both of them. One is being disrespectful to the other, but the question is, who is being disrespectful to who? In my opinion, it seems more like the son, who was trained with Demura, and is no more better than Demura as well. Now, of course, yeah, Demura, uh, doesn't mean he doesn't respect the son, but the son seems to want obedience like he's a god or something because he's his father's son. And unless the father gave you inside information Demura doesn't have and you just don't want to share it with him, that's the point as well. But if you're both trained the same, you're the same rank, and Demura does not have to defer to you either. So whatever it well, but face doesn't mean what you think it means all the time. Uh, face is first towards your father who started trading both of you as well. No matter when you came into it yourself. Now if Demora came into it first and then you out of jealousy of Demora came into it, you seem petty. And I'll take Demora's side over yours anyway. Because... Uh, I heard the story of how your founder started it when he was 13. Well, I started studying when I was 13 myself. And, you know, I asked uh, Sherman, who was one of the guys I took karate with. I know. Um, uh, we were talking about Bruce Lee starting his training with Yip Men also when he was 13. Now, he had already knew karate, but... That's a coincidence that me and Bruce Lee started with an official instructor, as did the founder of Shidaru as well. 
So, again, he honors your father, but not you, because in his mind, you're being disrespectful for, to a fellow student who is trained with you equally under your father. Unless you know some secret techniques you don't know or something, and your father only imparted them to you, which is fine. You are a little, know a little bit more than he does right now, all right? But see, anyone can learn any technique if it's a good technique, right? All right. But if you are keeping the secret to yourself, you're also a bad teacher because when you die, who will know what you know but you? You're really dishonoring the memory of your father by not allowing yourself and the more who is more popular than you to teach the style your father taught you both at the same time. And that's the point. That's the point. Um, in the Marines, they have death before dishonor, meaning you do not dishonor anyone, but honor is also uh, a tricky slope too. Because some people can take honor and make it dishonor. It's a very easy thing to do. It's like not respecting someone else's feelings as well. And Demora has a point. If you are both trained starting around the same time and you're both black belts, he don't have to acknowledge you because the father uh, is superior to you. And he can go off and start his own dojo as a black belt. That's the point there, too. Alright. Enough about history here. So, I'll go over it one more time. I'm also trying to determine her stance. She does an inside block and then a front kick after that. Okay, she does step forward with the right kick, put us off the right leg, and then she does a some kind of Again, go back to the spear, the knife hand, and then the spear. Oops, that's backwards. The, the, the knife hand is here, and then the spear hand is here, and then I think she flips around like this, which would make more sense. And then she goes up like this to the right side, and then she um probably just swings over like this, I guess. Then you go forward this way, right? Then you go like this to an inside block, outside, yeah, inside block, kicks, punches, then she comes up like this with her hands at her side, and that's the next few techniques. Let's see what she does next. Again, we'll start from the spear hand. The first knife block and then the spear hand. Knife hand block. Spear hand. Switch around like this. Then like this. Then like this. Then like this. Then block. Kick. Punch. Step up.
kick, punch, step up. Then she turns this way, downward block, upper block. Then this way, downward block, upper block, into the cut. Alright. <clears throat> Now, I hope either one of them will bury the hatchet, the son or the, the uh, adopted son. But, you know, pride goes before destruction and the healthy spirit before a fall either way. It would be nicer if you acknowledge the son a little bit. And he seems to have a problem with you not wanting to communicate to him, which communication is vital. And if you just send him, thank you for standing it with me in the stead of your father, something like that, Mr. Demore, or Sensei Demore, maybe he would um, not have a hold a grudge on you anymore. Now it seems to me like it's a failure to communicate either way. From you to him or him to you. So anyway, now that I know the whole kata, I'm going to try and do it in one uh, movement, beginning to end. Yen, Yen, show them. Okay. All right, I'll start again. I got a little. I need to move up a little bit. <laughs> All right. I need to check out one more thing. I'm forgetting. Just had breakfast, so I'm a little. My body is digesting my food, and sometimes when you do that, you uh, have a little bit of a. Short. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to try and do it in one.
God, again. Why is here? Pinan Chola. I'm at it in move, that's where I'm at in move. Okay. So anyway. Pinan Shoda. Pinan Shola. Pinan Shodan. Alright, um, that's my first time all the way through. Now, since we're sort of pressed on time, uh, I'll just let that one stand for today. But, um, every time you do the kata, go over the video at least two to three times and then remind yourself of the techniques. That's why. For now, until I reach black belt, I'll go over these two kata, these two forms, uh, once every day for six days, and then take a rest on Saturday or Sunday. Now, um, depending on your training, uh, you can do this as well.
All right, now we're going to go over the Bankai and the Oyu. Which is based upon the movements of the Kata. So, uh, next thing we're going to go over is the Bankai. Okay, the basic application of the kata is both these here are a block, and this here is a block too. But uh, this here is a strike uh, to the body. Or the head. Now, also, if you're, after you do these moves, you're here, here, yeah, here, you block in here too, and then you step out into the move. You can also do an elbow strike if you're too close, or a hammer fist if you're too, too far away. Alright, um, next thing is the continuation of the kata. Alright, now what he's explaining now is when you block here and you kick here and you punch here, then you block again, and you kick again, and you punch again. That's just a continuation of the kata. Alright, the next card is called Pinan Sandan. Alright, the opening move is an inside block, 
then stepping up with, into a horse stance with a double block. So you like this. Pidan Sanda. Let me see what stance he's in. I forgot that. I need to mark the stances. Alright, so, anyway, Pinan Sanda. The first one is an inside block uh, with your left leg in the cat stance and your back leg straight. So you step up here to a block, block, alright, to a block. Pinan Sanda. I'm going to be doing the block for you. Okay. Yeah, I So, anyway. Pinan Sanda. So, um, what you're doing from the side is you're like this. Yeah! Pinan Sana. So you, you're blocking this way. Then you step up and block like this. Then you turn around this way, block like this. Again, step up. Boom, boom. Okay. So here's what you're doing. Bow. Pidan Sanda. So, we'll start off from the beginning. Now, when you're a student, you start out slowly learning it step by step. Once you go down path, that's when they'll test you or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Now, in Cliff's system, we had 4-H forms, then uh, more advanced forms, and then stuff like that. Uh, Sanction. Pinan Sana Pinan Sana
So again, Pinan Sana. Now, what this movement here is a block of someone kicking towards this area as well. Pinan Sandan. Pinan Sandan. He spins around, but I'm trying to learn how. Okay. So. Pinan Sana. Kia. Pinan Salan Sorry, I have to adjust a little bit. I'll back up my car a little bit real quick, so I'll pause the video here. Um...